Good morning! Hey everyone, James Rath here. I'm here in San Jose, California for Apple's WWDC event this week. And if you don't know what that is, it's the Worldwide Developers Conference. Basically, Apple shows up first day, announces a bunch of cool stuff, and developers stay for about the whole week to just make better apps. So typically at WWDC, Apple usually announces new software. This has been an ongoing trend for many years now, but there were also a lot of hardware announcements. Now I'm not really here to talk hardware yet, but just in short, they had new iPads, new MacBooks, new MacBook Pros, new iMac, and even an iMac Pro. And it's kind of a monster actually. I'm kind of excited for it. Will I get it? Uh, probably not, but we'll, we'll see. They also announced a brand new product altogether, like a brand new category. We'll touch on that a little bit later. What I'm here to talk about though is the operating system iOS, which runs on iPhone and iPad. Apple announced iOS 11, and with that, tons of new features. Some that I specifically want to point out, some that are kind of hidden and weren't really even talked about at Apple's big keynote press event. That's okay. That's what I'm here. I'm here to highlight such features to you. Now off the bat, I do just want to let you be aware that the features I'm going to be highlighting are pretty much specifically accessibility features. And what this means is just the features that are there to allow everyone to use their device like everyone else, just sometimes a little bit differently. I don't believe that accessibility features are exclusive for people with disabilities like myself, who is legally blind. And I, I think that anyone can use them and for different things maybe, sometimes the same thing. Even when I sat down with Tim Cook last month, he even mentioned that he uses some accessibility features, specifically visual stuff. Like I, Absolutely. I, I mean, I use Night Shift all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, occasionally, I, I use um, things to change the contrast because sometimes I have a difficulty with certain colors. Um, I use HomeKit many, many times a day. Yeah. Anyway, with all that out of the way, I'm just going to jump right into it and talk about some, some cool new features that are on iOS. Also, I should just note one more thing. This is beta, which means these features are not final and these features might not be final in the final release that comes out in fall for the public. Now let's really get into it. First off, I wanna talk about one-handed keyboard. This feature did get a little bit of spotlight during the, the keynote presentation and it's not actually hidden within the accessibility options of the phone. This is actually something that's right off the bat available. Uh, it's just gonna be under the language option or emoji option if you have that. Just do a hard or long press and it will bring up the ability to switch your keyboard to shift a little bit to the left or to the right. What this allows you to do is type with basically one thumb. Which is nice because I mean the bigger that our phones are getting the harder it is to type with one hand all right next up I want to talk about smart invert colors invert colors has been available on iPhone for a while now but it's just been an on and off switch basically it, you turn it on every color is inverted to the opposite color useful for some people but but generally this isn't a feature used by many people I have used invert colors in the past however I use night shift more now since that is released but smart invert colors might change that the idea behind this redesign of invert colors is that apps that have darker tone colors or imagery or videos, those aren't going to be inverted. I love this idea and at the same time, it is very early. I've only seen, I've only seen the early version of this so I don't know if this is something that apps individually need to incorporate or if Apple is just doing something all on their own. Apple hasn't incorporated a dark mode into iOS which a lot of people were hoping for but Hey, in the meantime, this works pretty well. Next up is accessible PDFs. Now, I, I don't think I know exactly what this is, but at the same time, I think I might know what this is. And this might be where if you have a PDF file, typically PDFs are just, if they have text on them, it's just acts like an image where iOS can now tell if text is on a PDF and you can copy, maybe you can uh, have it use speak screen to actually read what is on that PDF. Again, once again, I haven't actually seen or tested this feature, so I don't know. I could just be pulling all of that. I just did a little research. It turns out that is exactly what this is. All right, next up is a feature that I've been asking for for probably two years now. I've been sending feedback, been talking to some people. This is something I've been kind of hoping for, not necessarily even for me, but for my friends who are deaf or hard of hearing, they have not been able to really interact with Siri very much, whether they are nonverbal or uh, their deaf accent just isn't recognizable by Siri. 
they they kind of felt like they, they've had this feature on their phone that they just can't use and it's it's always right there now you have the ability to interact with Siri via typing so you can create sort of a text message conversation if you will with Siri this allows people who once again cannot hear or are nonverbal to interact with Siri tell Siri commands uh, and this gives you access to things like HomeKit, which we're going to talk about a little bit more in just a moment. I do just want to share a little bit of love for my friends who do know Braille and use Braille machines with their iPhones and iPads. Enhanced Braille editing is included in iOS 11 along with spoken and Braille captions for videos. So, so let's just say YouTube updates our app to allow for this feature then that probably means that you'll be able to have your refreshable Braille display uh, actually bring all the captions of the video or the transcript into your Braille display and you can just read it from there. Kind of cool. Again, I, I think that's what this is. I'm pretty, pretty certain, but I could be wrong. Next up, Emergency SOS is coming to iPhone from the Apple Watch. What this feature was, was uh, if you hold the uh, side button down for a long period of time, it will uh, start doing that. Basically start creating this loud noise and it will uh, contact emergency services. It'll call 911 and notify your emergency contacts uh, who are on your medical ID. Only use it if you are in danger or you are in a critical situation. Now it's on iPhone and you can turn it on in settings and then you can basically just tap the sleep wake button several times, I think about five times rapidly and it will uh, send a emergency call to 911 along with notifying your emergency contacts. Right now I have three people in LA who, which is where I live, uh, who will be notified and then my parents back on the East Coast. All right, and lastly, like I mentioned before, Apple had a brand new uh, category, a brand new product, and this was called the HomePod. And what this is, is a very incredible sounding speaker. Not just the speaker, but it has Siri and, and intelligence built in. So this can kind of act as a hub for your HomeKit. HomeKit is basically uh, Apple's answer to creating an automated home. If you want to see more details on that, check out my visit to Apple's campus. You can learn more about HomeKit in that. So the HomePod is coming out in December and it's going to retail for $349. Now that might seem a little bit expensive if you are comparing it to the Amazon Echo and the Google Home as a smart home assistant. However, keep in mind that this is also marketed as an amazing music speaker. So really, in a way, it's not competing with these two, but in a way, it, it offers something that's better for a more premium cost. But if you're a fan of music and you love music in the home, this might be the speaker for you. And then if you want an automated home, hey, you got Siri built in, it can interact with all your devices and kind of act as that hub, which is really cool. Anyway, those are some of my favorite new features in iOS. Once again, accessibility features are not exclusive to people with disabilities. So check these out, try them out, see if they, if they can be incorporated into your everyday life if you consider yourself an able-bodied person. Thanks everyone for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below because I want to ask you, what is your favorite accessibility feature? Have you tried accessibility features? Do you even use an iPhone or iOS? If not, what's your favorite accessibility feature if you have one on your preferred platform? Let me know down below. I'm curious. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.